I think we should all become a little bit more Kumandra. The world's broken. You can't trust anyone. Maybe it's broken because you don't trust anyone. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and Raya and the Last Dragon is Disney's newest animated movie. It's an action-adventure fantasy film that was directed by Don Hall and Carlos Lopez Estrada and co-directed by Paul Briggs and John Reaper. Originally it was scheduled to be released last year, but because of the pandemic it was postponed. Now it's coming out this Friday, both theatrically where possible and with premiere access on Disney+. The story of Raya and the Last Dragon is set in the fantasy world of Kumandra, a world in which hundreds of years ago humans and dragons lived together in harmony. But all that changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Sorry, not completely, but there are some very strong Avatar The Last Airbender vibes to be found in Raya and the Last Dragon. Especially when it comes to the exposition and introduction of the different tribes of Kumandra. Add a little bit of Disney's Moana, plus a funny dragon sidekick that was stripped from last year's Mulan live action reimagination and put in here. And like Mulan, this one also features a predominantly Asian American cast. With Kelly Marie Tran in the title role of Raya, a courageous warrior princess who seeks out to bring back peace to her world with her newly awakened sidekick Sisu, the title of Lala's dragon, being the key to it. Sisu is voiced by Aquafina, who has one of the most unique and peculiar voices out there. Raya's antagonist Namari is voiced by Gemma Chan and her father Chief Benja by Daniel Day Kim. The film has a very neat first act, introducing us to this world and also to our heroine still as a young girl, before things go horribly wrong and we skip six years and continue in a much more dangerous place. The best thing about this jump in time for me was that we get to see her little sidekick Tuk Tuk in two different sizes. Tuk Tuk is this adorable mix of an armadillo and a pill bug and at first he's just this tiny little ball that helps Raya out. And then six years later he's still always at her side and helping whenever he can, but now he's this giant companion that's also used as the most incredible form of transportation. Seeing Raya and Tuk Tuk driving through the vast landscapes of Kumandra was a definite highlight of the film for me. In general they do a really nice job taking us to these different spots of the world, all with their own local flavor. And all of them mainly inspired by Southeast Asian cultures like Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Myanmar, Malaysia, Indonesia and the Philippines. Raya and the Last Dragon unfolds like a classic adventure story, a quest for mysterious dragon stones that lead our heroine from one exciting place to the next. There are some action in form of martial arts or little chase sequences, some comedy, a good dose of cuteness and of course some emotional backbone as well. The big theme here, which is also really directly addressed more than once, is trust. Trust in other people, working together and not against each other. Maybe just don't fully trust a con baby. What? Con, baby? Anyway, as the journey continues, Raya meets a lot of new characters who then become part of this nice little eccentric team. Almost like the Guardians of the Galaxy, though not as emotional resonating to be honest. And in general I wasn't as thrilled by the film as I was hoping to be. Raya and the Last Dragon is a nice fantasy adventure movie with some decent world building and a good message. There's nothing really wrong with it all. I think it's just some aspects for me that hold it back a little bit. First of all it comes across as fairly formulaic. From the father figure, the funny sidekick, the cute sidekick or sidekicks, to the quest storyline and message. It's a good formula and the setting is what distinguishes it, but for me it was missing that certain special ingredient or bold idea to elevate it more. It's extremely predictable and I think overall more aiming at a younger audience, which I also felt in regards to the humor. There were a lot of moments in there that worked quite well for me, but also at least the same amount of jokes that didn't land. Some of it reminded me more of that DreamWorks tradition of trying to be a little bit too cool for school. Aquafina brings some good laughs, but I also found her character to be slightly obnoxious at times. A minor aspect that made me wonder a little bit has something to do with the finale, which I of course won't give away at this point. I was just a bit baffled why one of the two fighting characters was so keen to fight at that specific time in the story after what just happened. The whole dynamic between Raya and the antagonist Namari is alright, but I couldn't help but find it a bit too generic at the same time as well. And now the last thing that I want to address, and this might sound a bit strange, 
but somehow I was rather underwhelmed by the animation itself. While I found that a lot of the world was brought to life rather beautifully, the human characters didn't quite live up to that for me. Some scenes felt rather stale and a bit lifeless, reminding me more of Disney shows than big budget theatrical movies that try to push the animation boundaries. Maybe my expectations at this point are just a little bit too high. And maybe it was also partly because of the press screener version that I got. But it just didn't wow me the same way that Moana or just recently sold it. There are also some other animation styles used for some brief moments and even some split screen, which I liked, but then they didn't really make that much with it. Now, I still think it's a fairly decent fantasy action adventure, just not one of Disney's best or most special. So in German I'd say, Raya und der letzte Drache kreiert eine hübsche Abenteuerwelt und eine nette, bunt gemischte Heldentruppe. Insgesamt bleibt der Film aber auch etwas zu sehr in bekannten Mustern stecken, um mehr zu begeistern. I give Raya and the Last Dragon 7 out of 10. It's more like 6.7. But I don't do that. <lacht> Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about Raya and The Last Dragon. Are you excited for the film? Do you plan to watch it in cinemas or at home with Disney Plus? Let me know. And you can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Letterbox, and also on Patreon simply at The Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.